Um, <laughs> Oh, but the second factor that I wanted you to consider and I wanted to uh, maybe have, have a conversation about is land use change and especially deforestation. Because this is another factor that we have to consider uh, when um, managing protected areas, when uh, prioritizing uh, for uh, an extended network of protected areas, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, all familiar with deforestation pictures, and I put some uh, small pictures here, um, all worrisome. And we usually, when we hear about deforestation in the news, we see these dramatic pictures. Um, uh, the media messages are quite strong. Um, but if we s step back and we think about it, we do we do need the resources. For example, today we saw we saw local people gathering wood for fire. Now that's not deforestation for sure. They are just using the resources, right? It's it's not like they are cutting down entire uh, swaths of forest. But unfortunately, when we have population growth and we have um, you know more need for, for example, uh, a protein, we will see um, uh, parcels of land or forest being cut to make room for cattle uh, or agriculture or whatnot. So we do, we do end up using land for, uh, to get the resources we need as people. So how do we reconcile this need for resources with these uh, deforestation picture, pictures that are uh, generally uh, quite disturbing? And maybe perhaps it's not good to, to, put to, um, to use as synonyms deforestation and uh, land use or use of resources for, for uh, human, I don't know, for, uh, su for a sustainable, maybe, uh, livelihood. So they are not quite the same thing, but we are referring to the forest loss, the reduction in uh, forest cover here. Um, so even though we need to use resources, we do see significant Could changes in land cover. Me? Yes. Uh, how is the difference when we say deforestation? Maybe deforestation co uh, causes by different demands, maybe for settlement or maybe for agriculture, whatever it is, but still we are losing. Mm -hmm. So how we can differentiate? In my view, I would differentiate based on the magnitude. You know, if it is a large area and we have mm -hmm. a small village taking out uh, selectively cutting trees, I wouldn't say that's deforestation because that's not completely uh, cutting down an entire, I don't know, ten hectare of 10 hectare, 1 hectare, 10 hectare, 100, 1,000 hectares of forest. Yeah, yeah so for example, there is uh, deforestation for the sake of, uh, okay, cutting of tree for the sake of agriculture for 5, 6 hectare, for example. Mm -hmm. It is one land use system mm -hmm. because it just uh, survive for that community. Mm -hmm. So can we say this one? I would say that's deforestation. Okay. I would, I mean, if it's clearing the land, I would say that's deforestation. But again, if it's clearing the land, the size of this room, we can't really call it. I wouldn't call it deforestation. I would call it forest loss, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, to me, deforestation is a strong word, and I don't know if for for but the rest of you. But forest loss is the other name of deforestation. Uh, I guess. <laughs> A milder form of, of uh, I think forest loss to mean the finishing of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> we lost it. Did we lose the entire Amazon <laughs> forest? Thing? Me, me, we lost a part of <laughs> forest loss. You, you could lose forest that is the size of the entire Amazon basin or the size of this room. That's what I'm saying by forest loss. You know, we have to we have to think of the magnitude of that removal of, of trees. I don't know. I, at least in my view, but okay. I'm accepting the, uh, the the other view that deforestation and forest loss is the same thing. No, I agree. In the space of time, that's a good point. Yes. So if this is occurring over time, frequently or continuously, then that is, I would say, clear case case of deforestation. I don't know what. Was that what you were trying yeah, to say? Yeah, of course, you were saying that cutting trees, uh -huh. correct, in the sense of making use as a resource, mm -hmm. I think that if a village community is making use of it by removing single tree mm -hmm. and in a very wide mm -hmm. range, time range, I think it will not necessarily be deforestation because 
maybe before 50 years, some of the other trees must have gone to yeah. so a certain. So we could yeah, call it a more sustainable sense of forest. Yes. Well, and this, and this brings up a point that even in our own field, we all have a different way of defining things, right? Yeah. So when it comes down to it, it's a case of always state your assumptions of what you're defining as forest loss or deforestation or whatever the case may be. So again, all the same field, but we're, we're all viewing it slightly differently. So when you're saying deforestation, deforestation in this case is defined as. Right, right. And we, we had quite a conversation about endemics versus near endemics. So it's, I guess, to some, to some degree, it's a point of a semantics type. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were some comments from this part. Very, very small one. Yes. I consider forest loss as uh, the consequence of deforestation. Forest loss as the consequence of deforestation. Okay. Yeah. 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 I use them as synonyms of forestation, forest loss. I think I've done that in this presentation, so <laughs> to make things more confusing. <laughs> yes, you are right. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, so this is an example not of forest cover loss, but of land cover changes. And I picked this example because this is in an area that um, you know we don't think of as maybe we don't think of as highly diverse. But there, there are grasslands here in this uh, part, the northern part of the uh, um, Great Plains of the United States, uh, where we find we have uh, species that are endemic to the, uh, the grasslands uh, in this region. So this is a look at um, forest, uh, not forest, <laughs> land cover in 2006, between 2006 and 2011, land cover changes. What we see in higher, um, uh, in, um, sorry, in uh, warmer colors towards red, is percent of grassland transition to crop and particularly to soy. So crop, just cropland in general, but al also soy, uh, soy uh, plants, plants. This uh, study was interested in the two. So uh, <laughs> what we see is that we have uh, areas of no uh, conversion, uh, but we, we also have, and of course these are areas that could be urban, um, other types of ag land, not necessarily grassland. So if we have zero, it doesn't mean that all this, the rest, the gray area is grassland. It just means that that conversion was not uh, observed. And then uh, what we see is an increase in uh, uh, land cover change from grassland to, these, uh, to, to crop and this particular type of crop. So even nowadays, in this day and age, uh, in a system that um, <coughs> maybe we don't pay much attention or we should be paying more attention, uh, land cover changes uh, do uh, occur. And I put the reference, reference there if you are interested. Okay, I'm sure we are more, we are not more familiar and perhaps uh, more, um, we have a stronger reaction to pictures like this. This is a, a, a piece of a large uh, uh, forested area in, uh, <coughs> sorry, in Bolivia in 1984, and this is the same region in 2000. So uh, from some agricultural land and some development over here and some sort of road uh, over here, we come to this highly fragmented um, forest loss deforestation uh, landscape, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we can agree that this is <laughs> Through deforestation, we lost forest cover. Yes. So let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> we had the semantics uh, argument uh, right before. Uh, but no, in, in all seriousness, this, this is definitely concerning, um, again, um, losing uh, forest cover. But going back to definitions, more definitions. So we talk about forest, forest cover, but what is considered forest? One of the major organizations that keeps track of forest um, changes and uh, uh, forest um, extents and whatnot is United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. So let's look at their de definition of forest. To me, this was very interesting when I was um, 
reading about deforestation and the numbers, the figures that United Nations was providing, I wanted to know what exactly they call a uh, forest. Um, 0.5 hectares of land uh, that has some trees would be considered a piece, a, a, par a parcel of uh, forest. So just for um, illustrative purposes, this is uh, 0.5 uh, hectares. This is the main, uh, actually this is just the stadium of Oklahoma State University. So not a big piece of land, but if that piece of land uh, has some uh, some cover of trees would be considered a, 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 a piece of forest, a, a slice of the forest. Uh, forest nurseries, plantations for forestry purposes, wind breaks and shel uh, shelter belts, all these types of tree communities, let's call them, or shrub communities, they are considered and counted as forests by the uh, United Nations uh, Food and Agriculture Organization. Uh, there's also forest roads, clear tracks, fire breaks, small open areas. They also get uh, lumped into this calculation, this uh, amassing or calculation or quantifying of uh, forest cover. So this is, to me at least, this was very interesting. I'm not a forester. Uh, I had no idea that there were so many definitions and so many types of, um, I guess, um, parcels of land with trees, different types of, of I guess, uh, communities. So um, to me, this was uh, kind of surprising. Then let's, another, another piece of information that was surprising to me, um, uh, functions of uh, forest by, designated by the, the same agency. What we see is that um, conservation and biodiversity, 12% of what we consider to have to be the forest cover, uh, the global forest cover, 12% uh, of that is for conservation of biodiversity. Um, we have 30% of what um, F, uh, FAO considers uh, forest, 30% of that for production, social services, so on and so forth. So even if we say we have our you know, global forest cover is this much, um, if you know, we know the uh, we have the number, it doesn't necessarily, I mean only 12% of that is for conservation uh, and, uh, of biodiversity. So I think this is pretty important to put in the big picture. And this is 2002, this, picture, this graph is from two, uh, sorry, 2010, uh, and the assessments that um, FAO makes are used to be every, I think every 10 years, and then they got more frequent, yes. So 1990, 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015, so there is one from, uh, 2000, uh, from this year, from 2015. That covers the uh, previous five years, or summarizes the previous five years. So let's look at this, um, uh, a graph taken from the 2015 report, which I thought was interesting. So first of all, we have for the, in, and, and the duration of, of these, or for the entire period of time, from 1990 to 2015, this is cumulatively what we observe. So this is annual forest change. Zero means no forest change. This means obviously increasing forest cover. This means decreasing forest cover. So overall, from 1990 to, to 2015, what we see is temperate forests increasing in area, tropical forest massively decreasing, compared to, uh, to the uh, forest change in, in temperate regions, uh, uh, tropical regions um, losing forest, um, and then boreal mine getting a little bit more and subtropical a little bit less. So that's over from 1990 to 2015, these are the patterns. And then we can look at the patterns by, um, uh, by 10 years and then five years each. What we observe, uh, is this drop in tropical uh, forest cover. So this is a, a pattern that is prevalent no matter how we cut the data and what kind of time frame we use to, to look at uh, forest cover. And things are a little different for the boreal forest where we see an increase from 2005 uh, on. We see an increase in the forest cover. Again, remember the caveat what we consider, uh, for not we, what the official definition uh, FAO um, a definition is, or what that definition of forest includes, the types of um, forest cover uh, that it includes. How are these assessments done? Well, um, there are national level surveys 
uh, where uh, the agency in charge of forest management, uh, the, lo the national agency in charge of forest management sends data, hard uh, data uh, to uh, FAO. But there are also ways of, um, um, this is more now at the global level, more, uh, more, more and more used, using, um, making use of satellite images to classify land cover. And we talked a lot about, well, we showed you satellite images and what we do with satellite images, a little bit of what we do with satellite images. This is just a simple schematic view of how um, remote sensing works. Those of you who are not familiar with, imagine this is our land, uh, our landscape, and we have various uh, types of uh, land cover. So we have forest, water, grass, 